I've got a pretty good one my friend told me a while back. I originally posted this on X a while back, so I already have it all typed up. It really got to me the first time I heard it, so I like sharing it. Anyway, just some backstory, my high school town was pretty small, my graduating class had around 200 people in it I think. It is also kind of in the middle of nowhere. There is really only one main road going through the center. All the other roads are back roads going through the woods. I will be retelling the story from a first person perspective because I think it will be easier and sound less awkward if I don't have to keep saying he did this and he did that. I'm going to do my best to tell it to you exactly the way he said it happened. Here we go. It was pretty lucked up and I don't even know how else to describe it. Just thinking about what could have happened terrifies me. It was January junior year, and I was dating Kayla, not real name. We wanted to fool around, but we didn't have anywhere to do it, so we decided to find a random road where we could park my car. We had done it a couple of times before without any incidents. So at like 2 in the morning, we drove all the way down Adobe, you know the road by the gas station? We got to the end and there was a horse trail branching off into the woods. It was pretty wide, so we decided to drive to the end of the horse trail. When we got to the end I turned the car around so that the woods were to our back and the road was in front. This way I could see if another car was coming down the trail. So if you know Kayla at all, she is pretty crazy. But all she wanted to do was fuck, so I was thinking with my dick. We had sex probably four times, it was awesome. We were taking a break from this, cuddling in my back seat, when things started to get weird. There was a loud noise coming from the woods. It kind of sounded like screaming, I'm pretty sure it was an animal dying, it definitely wasn't human. So that kind of put me on edge, but I wasn't really that concerned. Ten minutes later, we hear more screaming. This time though it sounded more human to me. Like I was pretty confident that a person was screaming out there. And it went on for probably a minute. I'm freaking out now, but Kayla was getting horny again, so she was trying to convince me everything was fine. I was too distracted by the thought of more sex, so I decided to stick around. More accurately my dick decided that I was going to stick around. The screaming had stopped though, so I slowly settled back and dot about 20 minutes later. Though we hear a very distinct voice yelling in the woods. Help. Help me. It was a male voice, and it sounded like it was maybe 50 meters away. Now I'm freaking out, and even Kayla was starting to get scared. She wanted to go and see if someone was hurt, but I told her fuck no, we are staying in the car. So we waited out, and 10 minutes later we hear it again. Help. Please help me. Really loud this time, and closer probably 30 meters from the car now. We both went silent. All the windows were fogged up, so we couldn't even see outside. Finally, logic trumps my dick, and I start to get ready to get the hell out of there. I start putting on my pants and looking for my keys. I had climbed into the front seat when a pickup truck came from somewhere off the path about 100 meters in front of us. The truck pulled over to the side and parked. A guy gets out and starts shining a red flashlight around the road and then into the woods. I'm frozen in fear and Kayla is grabbing my arm and telling me not to leave until this guy does. He eventually starts wandering closer to the edge of the road near the woods. I start to breath a little easier and continue to look for my keys. Kayla started to say she found the key, but before she could, right outside my car we hear more yelling. Help. Help me please. It's not even 5 meters away now. Kayla slams the keys into my hand, and I peel out as fast as possible, probably fucking my car up. I'm doing probably 70 down this shitty path. We start approaching the truck, and I see the guy with the red light turn around. I just floor it past him. I drive Kayla straight home, and I remember telling her, I don't care what the consequences are with your parents, you are going home right now. We might have just seen something terrible. I go home, tell my mom my stomach hurt, and went to sleep. The next morning I was going bowling with a friend, and I told him the story. He said he wanted to go back to where it happened to see if there were footprints, because he didn't believe me. 
There was a lot of snow on the ground, but it hadn't snowed that night so there should be clear footprints. We drove back out there, and sure enough, there were footprints. And these prints told a story. My friend wanted to be a cop, so he considered himself an expert on the evidence. I don't know if he actually does know what he's talking about, but a lot of what he was saying made sense logically. Anyway, we went back. First, we checked out where it appeared the truck had stopped. The night before I had thought the truck had come out of the woods and onto the path, but it was clear now that it had come down the road just like we had. You could see tire tracks in the snow where it had pulled over. You could also see the footprints where red light guy got out. We followed the prints into the woods. They went only 15 or 20 meters back. They led to a huge pile of deer bones. And when I say huge, they were at least 20 different deer skulls. The returning footprints just led back to the truck, so we decided to check out the area where Kayla and I were. This is where things got really interesting. Minnesota. The first thing we noticed when we pulled up was the place where I had sped off. You could tell I was hauling ass. There were a lot of footprints around the car. It must have been a common place for people to park. So we went into the woods behind where I was parked and towards the direction the screams for help had come from. We eventually found some footprints and there were no other ones in the area. They looked fresh and big. Size 12's my friend guessed. So we followed them. They went in the direction of where my car had been parked. What was weird was the way they got closer. The footprints would zigzag in the general direction of my car. But once they got close enough to be in viewing distance of my car, the prints would stop every so often. You could tell the maker of the prints had stopped and stayed in these spots for a while. My friend pointed out that the prints at these spots were more defined and that the snow was melted more, indicating that he had waited at these spots. And at all of these spots, the prints were facing my car. The prints continued to get closer to my car, stopping every so often. They get about 10 meters from my car before they stop for the last time. This time though, you can tell that he wasn't standing. He was kneeling. There was a clear, defined print of someone's knee. After that, the footprints start to get really spread out. It looked like he started sprinting after my car when I sped off. That's it. Thoughts interpretations. I have a theory about what was going on, but I'd love to hear other thoughts. My theory is that the guy who was calling for help was trying to get my friend and his girlfriend out of the car so he could murder them or something. Which terrifies me, because if I was in that situation, I may have gotten out of the car to try and help. I'm not sure about the guy driving the truck. He may have just been a deer poacher dumping deer bones. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe.